Shall you, in what kind of financial leadership would you expect or think is necessary today to expand into these new areas and expand the market as well? You'll need leaders with a very global mindset. You'll need people who believe in top flight governance. You'll need people who believe in investing in technology. You'll need people who believe in succession planning. That was an issue that came up in several of the presentations that we want our business to continue over a long period of time. Is it still a very individual and individual profile it's and credibility? It's getting professionalized right? at a pace that I didn't expect. I think it has completely exceeded my expectations in terms of the speed with which it is getting professionalized. There are MBAs and chartered accountants and engineers and uh, all people from every segment of higher education represented in the community. And I think that's a fantastic aspect. One other point I'd like to make, which is that the regulatory processes in India will have to keep pace with this desire for scaling and with this desire for technology use and, uh, and just simply expanding the breadth of products which are available. What would be a specific uh, need, you think, or a step that a regulator should take today? My sense is that there needs to be a much better partnering approach, a communication between regulators and market players of a far more clear and intense type so that both of them realize the excellent work that the two sides are doing to create the right enablement to make this scale happen. I think you also agree that regulation uh, is not kept pace. Yes, I, I, I believe that in a number of cases, historically, the relationship between the regulator and the market participants here in India have been more adversarial than uh, is perhaps desirable. And I think the regulator does have to play a developmental role in a market like India where a no lot of markets are evolving. So uh, the, the kind of partnering approach that Mr. Hari Bhakti developed a sort of a symbiotic relationship where they sort of feed off each other I think is very critical and uh, I, I think it will also sort of reduce the risk of you know systemic stresses you know malfeasance of various kinds that tend to crop up in the process of evolution uh, so there is the opportunity to sort of preempt that by just having a more uh, you know open and transparent and complementary relationship between uh, the regulator and uh, you know, market participants. Chiragra, of the presentations we saw and you've been tracking the industry as well, any concerns that come to mind when you look at uh, good examples of financial leadership? The concern is only thing is that we are talking about multi-asset uh, company, but I think it, it will be a little difficult to compare all the assets at the same time because uh, equity has already taken a leap ahead, currency is very new in terms of exchange product, commodity is a little behind to that and debt is far, far behind. So I think as rightly the last point was that regulatory uh, constraints are still there, those has to come free and you know if you have more uh, compared to principle based approach of regulation to instru uh, you know instrument based approach if you get that then i think you can compare these assets you know properly and then the leadership will ev evolve uh, in due course of time so I, at this moment it's really difficult to compare all the assets at, at same platform so you're saying that uh, the companies are not ready for dealing with multi asset class business no i'm saying that they are ready with it i think but the platforms has to be at par the regulatory platform has to be at par, the pro uh, product platform has to be at par, the player platform has to be ha at par. Then only it will be an absolutely multi best thing. Companies are ready for it. Karthik, uh, the issue of uh, ensuring that investors understand the new asset classes as well. Today, in terms of the assessment and the figures you've uh, crunched, where does most of their business come from? Is it institutional uh, investors, retail investors? Is it growing? What percentage is it? And is the ratio likely to change? That's uh, it varies from player to player. I mean, we've seen players who are very much only into the retail space. There are certain players who have developed their systems and business model largely catering to the institutional or the corporate uh, services. And there are players, you know, who have uh, a fairly diversified mix of addressing both classes. So everybody has their own strategy. But if one was to look at an India story, then you know we do believe that the potential on the retail space is definitely much uh, more and significant. But at the same time, you know that also involves a lot more uh, compliance, whether it is governance, whether it is technology, whether it is a cost structure. You know, you need some more dedication to really build up on that 
and let it run on a really sustainable basis. Shalish, getting retail investors into commodities and currency, how hard a challenge is that? It's a huge challenge. It's a challenge of awareness creation, education, simply there moving out of their comfort zone. 55% of all India's retail wealth is held in fixed deposits with banks. Now that is a very, very large uh, mountain to move. But the, uh, when you talk of financial leadership, is then, isn't that where the focus should be then? It should be there. I agree. I think what the ultimate effect of good financial leadership should be to make sure that on a wide scale, people take advantage of the growth and the high profit opportunities that the country is throwing up. That is the real remit of a great financial system. Abhik, would you like to add to this? No, no, absolutely. And in the equity markets, which have sort of evolved now over a period of almost two decades, we've seen the sort of multi-layering of uh, investors. I mean, you have the day traders, you also have you know, retail investors who are interested in the longer term, you have institutional investors. And there seem to be, you know, products, research, inputs, etc., that cater to these various tiers. So it's really come a long way, I think, in commodities or in currencies. We'll have to go through this, uh, you know, process of evolution. Uh, the challenge today is to sort of uh, you know, fast forward the processes um, as much as possible so that we don't take as much time as in the equities market or go through the same uh, problems, uh, stresses that we went through in the equity markets to get there, and it's possible, I think. Chirag, with the entry of global players in this business in for the India market, how do you see that changing uh, the scenario? Yeah, the global player will be there, but what I believe is that global player will come into this uh, market when we become a price maker and not a price taker. And once we become a price maker, and especially for the commodity markets I'm talking about, and especially when talking about the derivatives market, then only the people will be coming and hedging on this platform, they'll be coming and doing his business on this platform. So we have to move from price taker to price maker, and then you'll see the global market players here. Karthik, would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. You know, and also, uh, you know, for larger uh, foreign guys to come in, you know, it'll be difficult for them to really tap the uh, rural India and the tier two, tier three cities. And, you know, that's where the whole lot of potential is there currently, which is waiting to be tapped. But that potential, will it be tapped by the physical expansion of retail outlets and franchising model? Or will the telecom network, you have the platform of 3G coming up, will that drive it? Hopefully that should drive it. But, you know, if you just uh, go back, you know, a lot of Indians are still, you know, as Mr. Hari Bhakti said, you're still having our money placed in fixed deposits. So for to m ask somebody to move from fixed deposits to capital markets, you can't just <laughs> give them an internet <laughs> account <laughs> and ask them to start trading. Go do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, you need physical presence. You don't have a choice but to build on physical presence.